how we do it today. Welcome back to the vlog. I am starting it off on Tuesday and I am about to leave to go home with Kelsifer in like a couple hours. If you watched, I think, I don't know, some video, last video, some other vlog, uh, you know, I'm going to my parents' house just to make sure that Kelsifer will be okay there. So I'll be staying for four and a half days with Kelsifer just to acclimatize him a little bit, make sure everything is okay over there for him. Obviously try. Um, We'll see how it goes to maybe have a meeting, uh, a coming together, a truce between Evie and Kelsifer. They've actually never met, so it could go swimmingly, but who knows. Um, so that is what I'm about to go do. My suitcase is just, <laughs> my suitcase is just full of things. It's just full of Kelsifer things. It's not even, doesn't even have things for me. It's just full of like his toys and his food and anything else that he needs. Um, Right? I'm actually gonna go pack up his dry food in a big container now and put all of his wet food as well into a different bag. I'm gonna be bringing like Calcifer's um, leash and harness and hopefully he can, for the first time in his life, touch grass and like go outside on a leash and like explore. He's had his flea and tick medication. I'm just so excited to see it because my hometown is very quiet. There's so many good places to take a cat who's never been outside before in a safe environment because in Toronto it's really hard. Something that has shocked me about living here and it has its good and bad is that first of all dogs are off leash so often. They're off leash all the time. If you go to a park chances are like no dog is on a leash and like Toronto does have tons of dog parks, tons of like off leash areas but even when you just walk down by the water or any place that's not near a big street, um, everyone's dogs are off leash. And for a new kitten owner who's trying to, you know, make their cat feel safe outside, it's not really the environment to do that because it's just kind of dangerous with so many random dogs running around off leash. It's just been really frustrating because every park we want to take him to, it's just dogs running around. The cool thing is that animals here can basically go in any store ever, which is just mind blowing to me because where I'm from, that's just so not allowed. Like my partner and I took Kels for grocery shopping with us the other night, a couple weeks ago. Um, dogs are allowed in pretty much every single store, cats, um, any clothing store, every retail store, grocery stores, um, and a lot of restaurants too. And it's just so, it, that's really cool to me because you could so not do that <laughs> in my smaller town where I'm from, they would ask you to leave. So it's really cool to just like be clothes shopping and like see dogs everywhere. In terms of other things that have been happening around here, I just filmed like a getting my whole life together <laughs> vlog. My courses started, um, I'm taking a women women writers course. It's an online course, but um, yeah, I've been talking about it a little bit, but it's going, it's, <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid, but it's too easy. It's not, like we're only on week two, three, two or three now, um, but I've taken a look at like the assignments and the lecture notes and it's just, um, I don't know how to say it any other way, like it's too easy. I don't think it's gonna challenge me in any way, which is really frustrating and obviously I could be completely wrong, but I feel like I know, like I know I've, this is like my last university undergraduate course now, I kind of know what to expect. Anyway, other than that, it's going fine. Discussion boards are the bane of my existence. Don't get me started on discussion board posts because I will. I will go bald. I will lose my hair. I also have a ton of reading updates and I'm trying to fit a couple books into my suitcase for home. Okay, he's just eating it. Kelsford, this is supposed to be for when we go home and you're just eating it. This is a buffet. Babe, I have not finished putting this in. You have a full bowl of food, but you wanna eat from here. I guess while he's chomping away, I'll tell you my reading updates. Um, I am currently, yes, I'm currently in the middle of Game of Thrones. I can't tell you how much I'm loving this. This is my second time reading this. Um, it's so much better than I remember, which I'm so thrilled about, but I'm actually so in love with this book. Okay, really quick, rapid fire, favorite characters, um, and please put yours below. Um, Peter Baelish, Bronn, Tyrion. Um, oh, who else do I like? I, I'm, I'll just stick to the first book. I really like Sirio. Rob. I'm actually not a fan of John. 
I'm more a fan of John in the book than in the show for sure. It's just written so well that it's just so nice to read. It's so addicting. I'm 338 pages through and I my goal is to kind of finish this before October, which is obviously in a couple of days. Okay, now he's getting into the toys. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I think I'm gonna have a lot of free time at home because I worked my butt off last week so that when I actually went home, when I actually went back home, um, I'd at least have some videos scheduled and I just need to edit rather than film. So I'm gonna devote, I think, a lot of time to trying to finish this. This is, again, <laughs> Carolyn's fault because she started reading the first one and I had always wanted to reread A Game of Thrones, but I didn't want to do, I didn't want to start my reread of the whole series until I knew the next book was gonna be released, which I don't think there's been any new news of. Like, I'll check again, but last I heard, it's just an endless wait. We will be waiting a thousand years for the book to be released, but um, I'm just really having a good time. I do not want to put this down. I'm just so hooked. If you haven't read A Game of Thrones or if you've seen the show, it is better than the show 100% and I would just really say pick it up because it's so good. I've dog-eared a couple of quotes even as well. The werewood's bark was white as bone, its leaves dark red, like a thousand blood-stained hands. Tyrion Lannister looked up from his books and shivered, though the library was snug and warm. Something about the howling of a wolf took a man right out of his here and now and left him in a dark forest of the mind, running naked before the pack. I'm currently on Arya's chapter uh, and she's catching cats in the castle. So that's what's happening there. And then I think the audiobook I'm gonna start is The Silence of Bones by June Her. I was trying to pick more of like an October spooky one and I think this is a murder mystery. These are the two that I'm gonna bring home with me this week. Today is Tuesday, um, but I also have a couple other audiobooks if I'm not loving this one. I also moved my <laughs> bookshelves all around again. So I put one here and this is just kind of like I don't even know what's on here. Fantasy, sci-fi, middle grade, young adult, and then up here is like more modern classics, lip fic, and just things that I think are really cool. And then this shelf stayed here. So this whole shelf is my classic lit shelf, except for the very bottom, which is nonfiction. Um, so yeah, these are all my classics, uh, almost all my classics because we got a TV. We have not had a TV for years. Uh, we never had one at our last apartment just because like I was still recovering from the concussion. I couldn't watch TV anyway. Um, and we're not really big TV watchers, but like for playing games and stuff, we finally decided to get one because otherwise we have to go in like the den and there's like no windows in there and it's quite tight so um it just made more sense to get an actual tv out here we are gonna put it on the wall it's not gonna stay here but um we're just waiting for the mounting stuff to get here and then um the apartment will actually mount it for us so that's nice um but that is there for now calcifer has been obsessed with the tv um excuse me haven't you he has loved watching tv like he has been so enamored with it um we put on like planet earth we were watching planet earth on it and he was so into it and then the last shelf the brown shelf i just stuck in this corner which i think actually looks really good and it fit perfectly so that's where all my books are and then this has some more fantasy um a plant and then some more young adults and fantasy manga um, Harry Potter stuff and then my school stuff and then I did end up putting some this is actually Carolyn's suggestion when she was here She was like, oh, you could put books on your plant stand So I just put piles of books that I already read. I don't know why I decided to do that But these two piles, they're all red books and then I just put some random Rilke and stuff So that's what that's looking like
Five fives. Mm, lie. I have two fives. I have one. I have no fives. Ooh. Four fives. No. I have Bull, two. Bold pucky. No fives. There's one five more. Hey. Oh. Four threes. Lie. I have three. No, wait, what? Sorry. Wait. You said four threes? <laughs> five threes. Five threes. One. <laughs> I have two. I have one. <laughs> one six. Two sixes. Three twos. Three fours. Two fives. Four fours. Three fives. No. You're right. Survivor man who? So I am back in Toronto now. I got back last night um, with Kelsifer. So I have so much to tell you. I have, I'm gonna just tell you really briefly how our visit went. And then I have so many packages to open. Um, and not only those, I have two huge boxes 
in my front room that my dad had to carry in because I couldn't even lift them from you guys, from a couple of you guys, and all of these from you guys. These are the last few packages from my PO box in London that my parents kindly picked up for me, which is now closed. I'm not yet sure if I'm gonna get one here in Toronto yet. I'll have to get back to you on that one just to see you know what's happening with that but i wanted to unbox everything on camera because it's like the last the last po unbox the last po box unboxing from um, my hometown had a good week with calcifer it went so much better than expected like i was really really worried that evie would just either be way too rough with calcifer or too aggressive or just like you know it's just unpredictable because she's never met cats before we've never had cats and so i just really didn't know how it was gonna go but she was so good with him like if anything she was just like you know wouldn't really make direct eye contact she was the one who was a bit scared of calcifer rather than vice versa although you know calcifer did take a little bit to warm up to her it was just really really sweet and it just made me so happy to see like the two loves of my life meet and get along yeah honestly kelsifer had such a nice vacation like he loved it there um he loved exploring so much doing new things going outside he was such a cute little adventure cat and i think it was just really really good for him so honestly went really well um except for the drive in the car which he did not love at all and that was really hard so i'm gonna see what we can do about that but other than that he had the best the best week ever and yeah it's just made me so happy so that's how my week went it is now sunday i've had a very slow sunday my partner and i just watched the race today in singapore the f1 race which was fun <laughs> lots of things happened in that one and then we went out for a walk and we stopped in at the grocery store we went to a little market here in toronto and we just had like a really nice walk and we had lunch like outside at a picnic table which was nice and now I guess without further ado, I'm just gonna unbox some books for you. Um, I did already open two because Kelsifer kind of went a little ham on the packages, so I did open two. So the first one that I opened is from James, who is actually the author of this book. Thank you so much, James. This is The Nameless Courts, and I actually really enjoy this cover. I really like, I really like it. Something about it, I like the simplistic style. I love the spine. Um, and this is what the back looks like. A lot of conspiracy, a lot of secrets, a lot of people moving around doing shady things. So thank you so much for sending your book my way. And then the other one I opened is actually from this person's wife. Um, she wrote a poetry collection, which is so cool. And then it's signed as well. So cool. So this is In Her Jaws by Rosamund Taylor again. Another dazzling cover and this is a poetry collection that just looks so cool. Poems on history reimagined, astronomy, sorcery, wild landscapes, talismanic creatures, and queer love. I am so excited. Yeah, I flipped through here and very, very, very happy about this. And look at the postcard you sent along with it. Thank you so much. Um, so this is from Elena and Rosamond. Thank you. Rosamond. Rosamond? Rosamond. Thank you so much. Um, this is gorgeous. It's gonna go right on my poetry shelf. An envelope here that I'm gonna open. This is from Karen and this came from Illinois, if I'm not mistaken. And then on the on the flap it says PS I'm a former German teacher, so I'd be happy to speak some German with you whenever you have time. Thank you so much. That is such a kind offer. Oh it's a little card. <gasps> There's bookmarks inside. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we have one of some tigers. I've been drinking up all your informative and enlightening reading videos like a parched woman needing water. They have been such a blessing to me. Thank you so much. I'm reading Dorian Gray and just finished the Paris Library also started The Sun Also Rises. I've bought at least 20 new books on Amazon based on your recommendations so I can keep plenty busy and learning. It just means the freaking world to me and thank you for your bookmarks. Okay, this next one, I don't, oh it might have a note actually, it might have a note in it. Okay, these are from Evelyn. I've been watching your channel for a couple years now and I have to say you're doing a great job. Literally thank you, that means so much. Because you've recommended so many books to me, I thought I'd send a couple of my recent favorites your way. Both of these books surprised me in some way so I hope you enjoy them as much as I did. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Okay. What is the first one? Oh, 
Ooh. Ooh, Alexandra Bracken. You know what? Where have I heard Alexandra Bracken's name? Crap. Oh my god, what did she write? Okay, first of all, look at this cover. We have a ship. No, we have a city and a bottle. Passenger. Alexandra Bracken. Okay, we follow a violin prodigy who loses everything she knows. Thrust into an unfamiliar world by a stranger with a dangerous agenda. She inherits a legacy she knows nothing about from a family whose existence she's never heard of. Okay, it smells so good. Wow, I love, I do not read enough books set at sea or on ships, honestly. So, so excited for this one. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, a million little pe- I love when people throw books at me that I've never heard of in my life. Okay, this is a million little pieces. I love how shiny this is. Also, this is- man's hand is covered in donut sprinkles and this is by james frey at the age of 23 he woke up on a plane to find his front teeth knocked out and his nose broken he had no idea where the plane was headed nor any recollection of the past two weeks an alcoholic for 10 years and a crack addict for three he checked into a treatment facility shortly after landing there he was told he could either stop using or die before he reached age 24 this is his account of his six weeks in rehab. Is this in nonfiction? Ooh, it looks like it's written really interestingly. I'm very excited for that. Thank you so much. You guys are so freaking thoughtful. Yeah, like look at how this is written. Evelyn, thank you. Thank you so much. We have this guy, which might also have a note. This is from Jeff. I'm not sure if this is your type of book, but it's a short read and super interesting. Hope you enjoy it. Okay. All right. Ooh. Wait, what is this? A Slow Death, 83 Days of Radiation Sickness. Non-fiction book with detailed descriptions accompanied by vivid photographs. This work by an award-winning investigative team unflinchingly presents the effects of radiation sickness, a subject rarely discussed, never mind confronted in such arresting detail. It's about the worst nuclear radiation accident in Japan's history in 1999 um, in Tokimura, northeast of Tokyo. I th Jeff, this is totally my thing. I will totally like devour this. Thank you so much. We have this box. I freaking love that it came in a shoe box. I love this. This is from Zoe from Rochester, MN, Montana. We found the envelope. Oh, your writing is so gorgeous. That's not fair. Hi, Emma. I hope you, your partner, and Kelsifer are enjoying summer so far. I've been wanting to send you some books for a while, and I think you'll love the ones I picked. Thank you so much. Minnesota. <laughs> oh, wow. This is beautiful. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, let me show you this. This is Toby Alone by Timothy de Fombel. Look at this. Wow. Running from branch to branch, hiding in the hollow bark, exhausted, Toby is on the run, hunted by his own people. He's one and a half millimeters tall. I don't know if anyone watched Curious George. Uh, no, not Curious George. George Shrinks when they were um, younger, but that was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. It was George Shrinks, who was also a very tiny, tiny person. This looks so charming, and I've never heard of this, and I absolutely love this cover. Thank you so much. Dancing in the mosque. It's an Afghan mother's letter to her son. A son she was forced to leave behind. This also looks incredible. Thank you. Literally, thank you so much. None of these books. None of these books I opened, I've heard of, and I'm so intrigued and excited. So thank you guys. Literally, thank you so much. Um, I do still have two packages, but I'm gonna have to take you out of here because like I said, I can't lift one because too many books in them that it's um, insane. So I opened this first box, which I cannot even get any closer, um, but this is from Michael. Michael has been sending me literal care packages since I first started my channel. I think one of the first boxes that I got for my PO box was from him, and they're just always so just incredible, so much. Um, I'm s literally so appreciative. I cry my little eyeballs out every time I open it, and anyway, I went through some of them, but then I was like, wait, we should do it together so i have waited for you he knows my bookshelves better than like i do what's on them and like my reading taste so i'm just so i can't even say thank you i can't even say anything it's it's too much i do not deserve this in any way shape or form but all i can say is thank you from the bottom of my heart i'm just gonna start going through this huge box and then i have another box over there um that i haven't opened yet but kelsifer has been trying his best to break into so um let's just do a book haul 
everyone in the comments say thank you michael say a very kind thank you to michael because um you are about to get so many book recommendations you're about to see me read so many five star predictions because of this box okay so the first one right on the top is the temple of the golden pavilion by mishima i got to read my first mishima this year and so many people told me that this one is maybe one of their favorites this is about a guy who i think falls in love with the temple comes obsessed with the beauty of the temple and he cannot escape its image i'm so excited to read this so that is the first one in some of them as well like in some of them he put notes explaining or like a little tidbit which is so cool um so that is in that one and this is the flight of icarus by raymond quino yeah quino quino which i've not heard of but first of all look at the cover um, and then this is set on the back it says called by some the French Borges um, by others the creator of the new novel a generation ahead of its time his work in fiction continues to devise strict categorization a number of desperate authors are found in search of their fugitive characters who wander through the Paris of the 1890s occasionally meeting one another and even straying into new novels okay this sounds like everything I want to read literally Thank you so much. So that is this one. If anyone has read this author, let me know. Next one I pulled here is um, 104 Stories by Thomas Bernhardt, The Voice Imitator. And he said that this is perhaps my favorite author. Very cool. Never read this author, but this looks so cool. This one has been on my wish list. I've wanted to read this for so long, and that is The Makioka Sisters by Tanizaki. Look at how gorgeous this is. I've heard so many people recommend this to me and just say that i would love it so thank you so much set in osaka in the years immediately before world war ii it is an unsparing portrait of a family and an entire society sliding into the abyss of modernity we're gonna take a minute for this edition of the prophet are you kidding me are you freaking kidding me look at that and then yep and then I open it up and I found a note in it. It says June 27th, 1970, a special thank you, John and Wendy. And then it says, John, this is just a small token of my appreci of our appreciation. As my best man, you make a reality of a long thought dream, John. How sweet is that? Anyway, this is probably my favorite work of Jadron's, or is it? Did I like the Broken Wings more? I don't know, but um, this is a huge, beautiful edition of The Prophet. Um, I would highly recommend, and this is so, literally so stunning. Thank you so much. I'm gonna have to find where I can display this. Next, we have a couple Cristina Rivera Garza stories. Um, if you don't know, she wrote one of my favorite books ever, and from last year, The Iliac Crest. I have been wanting to read, I debated buying this one from Book Depository before I ever bought The Iliac Crest, so this is the Taiga syndrome, the Taiga syndrome. I'm honestly not sure how to pronounce it, but this is gorgeous. This is a detective novel that uses the individual's rollicking quest as a means of resistance against repressive structures and the violences they engender. It's more like Apocalypse Now fused with the worlds of Clarice Lispector and Borges. So excited. And then this one, I didn't even know. This is new and selected stories. I don't know where you find these things. This, I don't know. This is my theory. Michael lives near a portal of books, but a portal specifically of the books that like I would cherish the most. I think we should just get this one out of the way. He has found like the store, the cache, the treasure chest of Rilke material because there are so many um, Rilke works in this box that I, I had my own little private cry session last night, so I won't um, bother you with that again today, but um, this, this is one that he sent. This one, though, I didn't open because I was like, I'll save it for us together. This might be a facsimile because he left me a note that said, in here there is a Rilke notebook facsimile. Stop. Stop. Look at this. No. No. <gasps> Shit. Yes. Yeah, it's really freaking cool. Where? Just essentially where? Are you seeing this? It's his notebook. And it's obviously in German. 
I can't read it yet, but I don't care. This is the most incredible thing. Like, he reproduces, like, you know, the date that he's writing on. I really feel like I shouldn't be touching this. And then in here as well is this one. It's too much, but I'm so freaking appreciative. And that was all in this, like, cute little... Oh my god. He also gave me three editions of Rilke's new poems, which do I have? I do. Um, I have... What is this? Oh god. I have the North Points Press edition, um, but these are a bunch of translations and some of these are quite hard to find, specifically this one translated by Len uh, Kresak and yeah, a harder to find edition. Where are you finding them? Share your secrets. I don't know, man. I don't know where you, I don't know where you found these. Like literally no idea, but this is a translation of his new poem which he wrote between 1907 and 1908 and that was his transition from like his late 19th century style and then this one is translated by joseph cadora yeah i don't have any of these translations i'm pretty sure so a rilke reorganization is definitely in my future but these are so gorgeous these huge gorgeous hardbacks like are you kidding and then this one we have new poems again or new uh, Nua Gedichte, thank you, translated by Stephen Kahn. I don't know, I think I have the one by um, Edward Snow, who's all very famous. Oh, and look at that picture of him. But this one has the German and the English. You guys know how much I love Rilke. Um, this is just making me too happy for words. It doesn't feel like this. any of this is real. I literally feel like I'm in a freaking dream right now. <gasps> Oi! I just broke my nail really low. I've never freaking seen this edition, but this is the Pushkin Press edition of the Duino Elegies. <sighs> Translated by Vita Sackville West and Edward Sackville West. Look at how gorgeous. One. Okay, this one you put a note in. I don't know how you know these things. Early stories, not sure if these have been translated. Are you joking me? Are you joking me? Because there is there's a sizable amount of Rilke that hasn't been touched into English. Before I bore you with any more Rilke, let me just really quickly show you. We have In Praise of Mortality. Um, this is Selections from his Juno Elegies and Sonnets to Orpheus. And then we have the pretty famous Anita Barrows and Joanna Macy, who did um, his Book of Hours into English, along with a number of others. And they do a lot of work with Rilke, but this looks so interesting. And I love this one someone's annotated. These, the creme de la creme. Where? These are once again in German. These are my Bibles. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous. And these are all once again in German. Letters to his mother. Am I translating that correctly? I believe these are all of Rilke's letters to his mother. I'm about to go on a Rilke spree. We have this one, which I've always wanted to read by Jakobsen. Um, I've never read this author. This huge bind up of three books. We have one that doesn't belong with the stack and that is an arc of number nine dream. Are you kidding me? I have number nine dream on my shelf actually from Michael as well, funnily enough. Um, and now I have an arc, which is so cool. The box set is um, the Dark Forest Trilogy. So we have books two and three, which is, no, it's not called the Dark Forest Trilogy. Three Body Problem Trilogy, yeah. So we have book two, The Dark Forest, and then Deaths. And Three Body Problem was one of my favorite sci-fis from last year, which was also a gift from Michael. And now you've sent me the next two to complete the trilogy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you is like meaningless, but I hope it's not but it might be. Hey, another edition of Letters to Me. <laughs> These are ones I haven't seen yet. Wow. Wow. Who is this by? Translate, oh, by Anita Barrows and Joanna Macy, but I've just never seen this edition. Uh, we have War with the Newts, which I read the synopsis of and which sounds so cool. Humans versus Newts, what more could you want? Apparently this is about like an island of gigantic intelligent salamanders and our war with them. We have The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner by James Hogg, which I've never heard of this one, but this looks exactly up my alley. A tale of murder and madness. We have Living to Tell the Tale by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which I've never heard. Look at this sweet photo of him. 
Oh my god. He begins to tell us the story of his life. And then we have Legacy by Susan Kay. Um, she wrote my favorite Phantom of the Opera retelling, which is just called Phantom. And this is her novel about Queen Elizabeth. Grab three, we have Murakami's Absolutely on Music, which is a conversation about music that he had with his friend and him, which I didn't know existed. Thank you. We have In the Miso Soup by Murakami, a different Murakami, which I've wanted to read for so long. I believe this is like a murder mystery, or is it? Yes, it's about a serial killer. I'm very excited. Then we have Paprika, which I heard about years ago. Um, when prototype models for a dream invading device go missing, employees soon learn that someone is using these new machines to drive them all insane. Love it. Literally love it. Would read all of these in a heartbeat. Okay, we have two more Mitchell books. The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet. Really excited for this one. And this is Mitchell's newest book, Utopia Avenue. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I guess we should get this one out of the way. This is another one that I haven't taken out of the bubble wrap because I'm scared. I'm scared to touch it. I don't think my soul can handle this. No, these are so rare. Okay, so this is The Guest on the Who Bedside Companion, Weird Stories by the author of Phantom of the Opera. And this was the Phantom of the Opera's, like, original title page, title artwork. I'm gonna put this in a glass container. We have After Dark. This is an edition I didn't have of it. I love, I love this one. We also have Sputnik Sweetheart by Murakami. Thank you so much. We have one that I haven't heard of, which is The Third Policeman by Flan O'Brien. The nature of time, death, and existence. I have no doubt it'll be a five star. No doubts in my mind. We have The Forever War by Joel Haldeman. I read Forever Peace, which is like kind of a, it is a sci-fi, very much inspired by the Vietnam War, um, set far in the future. So this is, I don't know if this is, I think this is technically the first one. Um, and I read the second one, but it doesn't really matter, but I'm very excited to read this. We have The Story of a New Name by Lena Ferrante. This is the second book in the um, Neapolitan novels, I believe. I read the first one a couple years ago, loved it. Cursion by Blake Crouch very interested. I need to read more sci-fi. Oh, I didn't know that's what he looked like. About an epidemic, I think. 62, a model kit by Cortazar. So cool. And then the last one is 26 stories by Michelle de Assis. Ah, look at him. Thank you so much. This has, oh my god, I'm so excited. This is such a cool edition as well. I absolutely love that. Look at that. Amazing. I feel quite silly sitting here and trying to say thank you, but once again, Thank you. I don't know where I'm gonna put them, but um, we're gonna find out. And then, as if that wasn't enough, I still have one more box, the last box to open. So, let's do it. Okay, so I think I'm gonna film this one like this. This is the last box I just opened. I don't know who this is from yet. I'm gonna start taking papers off and maybe there's a note. Happy birthday, Emma. I hope you have a fabulous B-Day and enjoy all of your just because gifts. Thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> I am opening it on camera. <gasps> this is so cute. This little dog bowl from Evie. Okay, so I had a suspicion that this was from Tanya from Atlas in a Jar. You guys see her in my comment section all the time. I adore her. She is the sweetest person ever. <laughs> Literally, thank you so much. This is so sweet. I'm gonna go cry now. Tanya is honestly like, you just, on every single video I upload, you make me freaking smile. Like, you guys don't know how much you mean to me and your words mean to me. And I just thank you so much. Literally, thank you so much. Um, she also has a YouTube channel. You should check it out. She does, like, a combination of booktube and other fun videos as well. It's like, seashells in here. Oh. Okay, this is going to sound so weird, but everything smells so good. This whole box smells so good. I don't know what it is. It smells like chocolate. Oh my gosh, we have some coffee stickers. So cute. This is so cool. This is so cool. <gasps> Your wrapping is so nice. Okay, so we have this one. I don't even want to unwrap this. Like, these are too gorgeous. Are you joking? Oh, this is so stunning. This is the collected poems or selected poems of Emily Dickinson. Is it because I've been talking about her recently? That is so sweet. What edition is this? This is gorgeous. 
Oh, thank you so much. <gasps> Rilke in Paris. This book brings together Rilke's sublime poetic meditations on existence and the first English translation of Rilke's experience in Paris as observed by his French translator, who's Maurice Betts, are so gorgeous. We have a very heavy box. Oh, no, no, Tonya, <laughs> no. Studio Ghibli postcards. A hundred postcards. Final frames from the feature films. Are you joking? You don't know how many times I've looked at this or had it in my cart. Like, are you serious? My apartment is now gonna be pulled. The walls are gonna be plastered. So cool, thank you so much. Okay. Oh no, you did not send me a candle. Okay, I'm thinking that's what this is. We have the world's best three wick candle. Oh, wow. Paris cafe. Oh, rich coffee, brioche, and vanilla creme. Maybe that's why the box smells like that. Wow, that is so good. And this is such a gorgeous candle. We have another box. Your wrapping is out of this world. Can we appreciate her wrapping? What is this? Oh my god, Tonya. She got me a sunset lamp. I've heard of these and I've like seen these all over Instagram and stuff that like it's supposed this is gonna be so cool for filming I'm getting way ahead of myself, but it's supposed to make your room look like the Sun is going down You are gonna see this in use probably literally tonight I love all the seashells in here when I was younger I used to obsessively collect seashells because like I don't live near an ocean um, And I thought I still think they're the coolest things ever <sighs> Vegan hot cocoa I love your stickers. I don't think it's overkill at all. I love them. I've never had coconut cloud um, hot chocolate. Wow, toasted marshmallow flavor. This is just like the nicest care package. I'm gonna be sitting in the sunset, drinking my cocoa, smelling the Paris cafe, reading Emily Dickinson with my seashells. This one feels like a book. <sighs> it's Beauty and the Beast. Do you know what? I've never read Beauty and the Beast. But look at this edition. I cannot wait to read it. Are you kidding me? Tanya, holy shit. Beauty and the Beast and other classic fairy tales. My face is getting red, I'm overheating, I'm too full of joy that it's just coming out of my pores. Tea, I found cinnamon apple spice tea. Wow. Okay, the fact that you got me two candles, obsessed. What is this one? Oh, this one is Japanese cherry blossom. And this one is from Bath and Body Works. Ooh, very nice. This is gonna be like a nice bathroom calming candle. Maybe one, you know, for showers and things like that. Oh, I found another one. I'm gonna keep all of these. I'm like, it's like a little game. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. From the bottom of my heart not just the people who sent me packages um thank you tanya literally thank you tanya for the belated birthday present just for everything you do it's just really it recently it's been hitting me like every single day how grateful i am for this channel and for you guys because you guys you guys are the channel more than i am um and i hope you realize that so yeah i'm gonna sneeze now I'm gonna go, actually, why don't, why don't we stay hanging out? Why don't we go reorganize together, find a place for all these gorgeous things? I'm gonna try out the sunset lamp tonight. That's gonna be so cool. Michael, Tanya, James, Zoe, Karen, Evelyn, thank you. And all of you literally watching right now, thank you. much later now but I wanted to show you what I ended up doing so this is where I decided to put all of my Rilke work for now I might be installing some more shelves now that we have like a TV in the front room I'll probably put some shelves underneath but as of right now they all just fit nicely on like my windowsill they probably won't stay here for that long but I did organize them um, up to let's see 
here. So all of these are his major works and they're organized chronologically. We have a ton of editions of Letters to a Young Poet. The earliest one I have, I think, is the two Prague stories, which he wrote very early on, and then a whole bunch of new poem editions, which if you can believe, I've barely read from. I've mostly focused on like his earlier work, actually, and his later work, but haven't really touched too much of the middle. And then I have, like in general, some collections of like his selected poetry, like we have the Edward Snow translation. I think this one is by... who's this? Is it Stephen Kahn? No, Stephen Mitchell. Um, and then this is a French collection, and then this is one of my favorites. Um, and then we have my works of his that are like solely in German, so all of these. And then we have works and like biographies and collections that people have put together on Rilke. So that is how that came out. Um, really happy with that. I've just been organizing all of this stuff and packing a little bit for Iceland. So that's what I've been up to, but I'm going to get ready for bed now. But I'm just so happy I have that many Rilke works. That makes me so happy. It's a lot later now. I am exhausted. It's five o'clock, which probably means like I should stop working. I really need to get on a better schedule. Um, just like YouTube working, school working, and try to maybe try a nine to five method, see how that goes. Because like I usually, I don't have a set schedule. I just work like a lot, <laughs> maybe a little too much. Um, but I just finished editing a video for Friday. I'm really excited about that. I have to send it in to the brand and I've just been kind of stressing out about a lot of things to do before I leave for Iceland. So there's kind of just, feels like there's a little bit too much to do this week and it feels like time is kind of running out. But a lot of you guys have been asking me for Calcifer updates because I don't think I've really given a big update on him in a while but he's doing really well he's great he's amazing i love him to pieces he's been getting more and more cuddly as he ages is what i've been noticing like he will demand cuddles all of the time or just pets and scratches is pretty much what i mean he's been really good and i think the trip to my parents house with evie and stuff was just like i said a good fun vacation for him um something else i got to do in london actually was have my favorite um, vegan pizza, which is from this place called Pizza Project, and I don't know why for the life of me, like, that's the only location I've been able to find is in my hometown. Um, I have not found any here in Toronto. I'm like, sorry, I'm like peeling off my gel nails. I haven't found any here in Toronto. I, I can't find any. I, like, looked on Google Maps, and there's no Pizza Projects here. Um, it's Pizza, it's Pizza Project spelled really obnoxiously with a K, but, like, they have the best vegan pizza I've ever had and like in my hometown it's the one attached to like the bowling alley so I don't know I'm like I'm very surprised because I thought Toronto would have everything if not more or at least they would have you know a pizza project but I don't think they do and I'm so sad so now every time I go home I get pizza my order is just traditional crust with vegan cheese and then vegan pepperoni uh, black olives roasted garlic and caramelized onions Kelsifer is good I'm a little stressed out, but I am so excited. I'm so ready to be back on an airplane and traveling and seeing the world a little bit more because like I said, I haven't been out of Canada since high school and that was just to the States. So yeah. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is have a little bit of a nap before my partner gets home from work and then I think we're going to make shawarmas for dinner and then we're either going to go to the gym or go for a walk. So that is the plan for this evening. All right, so I wanted to come on here and give you kind of a close off of my week because I'm about to sit down, today's currently Wednesday, and just edit for the whole rest of the day, finish a paper for school, and then fly out to Iceland in a few days. And I have so many things to do before then. So I just wanted to give you my final reading updates, but first I wanted to show you something I bought because I'm just so thrilled with it. <laughs> Look at this. I found this on ThreadUp. It's a matching set, so we have the pants too. Like, are you kidding me? It's the Powerpuff Girls. It's the Powerpuff Girls and it's Buttercup. And it's so soft and it looks like it's barely ever been worn. 
I'm so happy. And then there's sweatpants and they're so comfortable. They fit me so well. And then it says buttercup. Threadup just always has the coolest stuff. So I'm just thrilled about this. And I just wanted to show you because when I was younger, I mean, I still love the Powerpuff Girls, um, but I used to watch the Powerpuff Girls a lot. When I was young, Bubbles was my favorite, but now that I've grown, buttercup is my favorite. You know, I see the ways of buttercup. I respect buttercup. So um, I did get the buttercup. <laughs> I did get the buttercup set. I do have some reading updates. I started Wide Sargasso Sea properly last night, so I did get 42 pages through. I got 42 pages through, and then literally as I was reading out of nowhere, I had a big panic attack. Like, yeah. It's probably something I'll touch on in a future vlog because I'm just wrapping this one up, but I've been experiencing a lot more panic attacks than normal. I'm someone who does get panic attacks, but before moving it was pretty infrequently, if at all. Um, but since moving, I've been experiencing, first of all, just unpredictable ones that come on without any kind of warning. Like, usually I can tell when, you know, they're building and stuff, but, like, I was literally just sitting down reading this last night, and all of a sudden, like, a panic attack happened for... I don't even know why. It's just been a lot. So I only got 42 pages through, but I am enjoying this. I think her writing style um, really takes a lot of attention, but I'm not going to say too much about it. I am on chapter 11, which is 106 pages through. I'm using my new bookmark from Karen. Thank you. Um, yeah, 106 pages through. I am liking it, but it is kind of not really as scary or frightening as I was like it to be, like things are just happening, like really shocking things, and they don't feel like they have that much shock factor, like she found her trunk full of drapery and curtains covered in blood, or like she found a skull in the wall, like typical gothic things, but they are, they're not really feeling that scary. Anyway, she's just enlisted the help of a priest to help her. <laughs> help her with the house. I want to say thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing well and um, yeah, I'm so excited. Hopefully make some cool videos in Iceland as well. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. You guys just mean like the absolute world to me. So until the next one, ciao.